Welcome to Why Knowledge Matters. Professor Ghosh, we are very happy and excited to have you here on our show today and I hope you are doing well despite the very difficult circumstances. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yes, uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, just taking it day by day but uh, hoping that one day this will not in the not too distant future this will be over. This difficult period will be over for sure. Absolutely. And today it's really exciting. You will be talking about the emerging area of education and security. Now, could you explain us or define what the emerging area of security and education means? Okay, I'm going to be defining a security a little later on, but just to tell you that at this, this particular moment in the pandemic, we can think of security in, uh, we usually think of security in personal terms, like a personal threat, but um, security really means, uh, uh, which I will come to later, it uh, involves, uh, many things, economic, social, but at the moment, it is the health security that is the problem. People's health is not secure, it's not safe. To be, to a security threat is a safety threat. So how is it that it's involved with education? Because it involves behaviors and attitudes. And it's a developmental thing that we have to teach students how to think critically. For example, in this pandemic, we have to see that um, if I don't take the vaccine, uh, it may not matter to me, but it may matter to someone else because I'm carrying the vaccine and the, the virus and may infect someone else. Or if I don't wear a mask, it, it may not matter to you, but it may matter to somebody else uh, whom I will infect. So it's important that we understand the interdependence of people and of things, and that we have to learn in a particularly in individualized cultures like North America, where people think of themselves more than of society. You must think of community, you must think of um, the society, you must think of your nation, and you must think of your, your role, your nation's role in the world. Because you can, if one person is infected, nobody is safe. That is why they're so worried about India right now, because they, it, because if everybody is fine and vaccinated, it's fine. But if India is not, then it's going to be a big problem for the rest of the world. So everybody is, and everybody is interested in seeing that the world is safe and the world is safe, that means security. But I'm going to talk specifically of another type of security and that is extremism because the global proliferation of violent events that is motivated by extremism is raising concerns in all parts of society, national, local, community, and international. It has implications also for personal security. This threat permeates all sovereign borders, and it is not a phenomenon that only happens in the non-Western world the extremism 
almost daily people in Canada, in the US and other Western countries are actively involved in terrorist related activities. An increase in violent activities means that youth are involved in extremist behavior. And in school, we teach people how to behave, how to react to certain things. And that is why education is concerned with security. Now, extremism, which means that when you do not allow for a, a different point of view, when you hold your own views as being quite exclusive and you reject other people's perspectives, that's extremism. Extremism may involve only a few students, yet its impact is far and wide. Canada has had few terrorist incidences, not that many. And it had is also share of violence in schools, shootings and uh, so on and so forth, bullying. But we think of extremism uh, in North America in particular, we think of it as Islamic terrorism because of what happened with ISIS and what because of the global reach of ISIS. But Actually, people don't know, most people don't know that the immediate threat, which has been going for some time, both in Canada and the US, is right wing white supremacist national group terrorism. They have been doing a lot of things which we don't hear about because they have not been defined by the nation state as terrorist groups until very recently in the United States. And even uh, just a few, few uh, years ago in Canada. So the most uh, susceptible people who adopt these extremist ideologies are young people uh, around the ages of 15 to 25 who are at a developmental age and they're seeking to uncover who they really are. They're looking for confidence within themselves and uh, they are in search of meaning in their lives. This age group is very action oriented and is usually characterized by higher risk taking as well. So given the dominant role of schools as social institutions where students spend a substantial number of hours each day, the role of education and the development of a peaceful and inclusive society is significant. But institutions cannot work alone. They need to work with the school personnel, with parents, with the community. And education is only one tool in countering terrorism, but it has much potential and the power of education and complementing counter-terrorism policies can be very significant because Unlike other things like um, policing and military action, which looks at the, what has happened, it's reactive. Education is proactive and it goes to the root causes that give rise to the radicalization that re leads to terrorism. And, uh, and right now we are under threat after what happened in the US, um, uh, you know, in the Congress, US Congress, um, people are really scared of what is happening with white nationalist supremacists. And, but these are people who have gone to our schools. They have gone through the school system and they have developed a state of mind which led them to do this. And this is what I'm looking at. My work suggests that education can play a significant role in countering terrorism, and um, especially in the, in the development of radicalization. And ra by radicalization, I mean, uh, I mean uh, extreme positions uh, which are taken by students uh, as they grow up and are justified on moral grounds. That's the stage of ra radicalism when they are justifying their thoughts, their extremist views 
on moral grounds, that is radicalization. And sometimes it, uh, it leads to terrorism, not always. <clears throat> but this has not been a hotly debated and hotly discussed topic within education. Because radicalization implies attitudes that contradict a set of values and beliefs that are typical of a particular society. Education is really a double-edged sword because on the one hand, terrorist groups have used education to promote extremist ideologies and they use social media and the internet to recruit students at all levels of education with psychological, intellectual and emotional appeal, which is called soft power. They're appealing through soft power. So education can be used to indoctrinate people. And there are schools that ISIS had uh, to, for them to become radicalized. And most importantly, to morally justify their violent acts. That's the difference between a, an ordinary crime and a terrorist act. On the other hand, education can be used to promote critical individual development for the good of the individual, for the good of the nation and resilience to counter extremist ideology. That no, I, I don't believe in something like that violence. But it is important to remember that firstly, a wrong approach can be very bad in a wrong approach in education can uh, have the opposite effects and simply to access education is not enough because we need to have critical thinking and multiple perspectives. We don't want to indoctrinate them because it would be just the opposite of what we want. We want thinking people, people who can think for themselves. Problem is that despite a tremendous increase in cost and efforts towards countering terrorism, terrorist attacks have grown. And uh, I have figures for 2007, between 2007, 2013, they have grown by 300% during that period. So now it is much more. Yet despite these investments, more and more young people are being radicalized. So I have argued in my work that the emphasis in Canadian counter-terrorism policies and programs thus far have been reactive rather than proactive. So that they have focused on policing, on intelligence work and on, um, uh, on military hard power rather than the soft power of behavior and emotions of people and attitudes of people. Uh, since this radicalization going, becoming radicalized is a transformative behavior. It is involved in steps to extremism. I suggest that emphasis should be put on children from the time they enter school so as to develop in them values, skills and behaviors that would be conducive to a peaceful and dynamic society. And this would mean that curriculum content, teaching methodology have to be changed. And most importantly, teacher education programs have to be aware of this because students need to develop a critical understanding of the world so that some of the triggers the push and pull factors that send them to the dangerous path towards radicalization is preempted so that we are proactive, we pre preempt them in school so that then they never develop. That is why programs are hard to measure because we are preempting something so we don't know how successful we are. The idea is not to have security concerns as educational goals nor is it to propose particular prevention protocols. 
but because different contexts and different educational systems uh, exist in the world we would just like to suggest some common guidelines on which educational institutions could focus and on the one hand that that would uh, prevent attraction to anti social activities uh, such as gangs and bullying and um, uh, extremism and on the other hand it would promote resilience in students through critical global citizenship most of the uh, proactive and preventive measures uh, have to be carefully designed and we do not want what the uk has which is called prevent 2015 which is to monitor and detect early signs of radicalization in students in the classroom even as small as uh, in kindergarten they are told to see do you see early signs of radicalization in france also they have something like that uh, and these target and stereotype certain students and certain groups so we don't want something like that Now radicalization is interesting because in itself is not a bad thing. It is the violence that is associated with it that is the problem. Violence is not limited of course to committing the violent act itself but it's also involves people who are in the planning and the recruiting of individuals who are going to do these violent acts. Many great men and women have been um the radicals for example malala if you've all heard of malala when she got the nobel prize it um, she challenged the taliban on women's and girls right to education then there is mahatma gandhi who challenged british colonialism martin luther king who challenged um black segregation so these people all achieved their goals in peaceful ways they were radicals because they challenged something that was the norm and which they thought was uh, unfair and unjust malala thought that refusing girls was unjust gandhi thought that british should not colonize another country that was unjust um, martin luther king thought that segregating black and whites uh, was not the right thing so that was unjust but they achieved their ends through um peaceful means and um it just means um challenging the status quo radical to be a radical is to be is to challenge the status quo so by itself it need not be bad but in order to provide a context and uh, maybe i should talk a little bit about uh, the canadian uh, framework uh, that put puts legislation for social justice as the basis of a peaceful society in canada there are uh, several questions um, first and foremost we what you just touched is critical however we see for example also within Quebec that actually um political leaders go the opposite direction for example ethics and religious culture program is actually put into questions not very uh, recently so what do you think why this is that things that ought to help prevent radicalization not necessarily radicalization but extremism and terrorism as you just pointed out is actually abundant that's a very good question and uh, the reason for that is that um, well first of all i want to say that they want to replace the erc program not completely cut it out they want to replace it with more um they want what they want to cut out is the religious uh, cultures part of it religious cultures part of it because quebec sees itself as a very secular country a secular uh, state and it does not want to 
have any religion in the classroom, even religious cultures. But I think it also depends upon what kind of uh, party is in power. If it's a rightist party, it will be different from a more liberal party. So um, it, there are two things in Quebec. So it's a party, but it's also the, 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 the fight for secularism, the need to impose secularism, which has led to the bills which are preventing uh, minorities from wearing, minority religious groups from wearing their cultural, their religious symbols. So in Quebec, it's a, it's a different um, dynamic. That is why uh, it's important for people to understand that if they want to have a peace in society, they will have to have something to teach students. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, what are the goals of education should be? And uh, we can talk about that. <laughs>